And so I want to show you the difference between conviction and condemnation. Um, conviction is from God, but condemnation is from Satan. Conviction leads to life, but condemnation leads to despair. Conviction ends in joy. Condemnation ends in sorrow. Conviction makes us want to change. Condemnation makes us believe we can't change. Conviction leads to a new identity in Christ. Condemnation leads to an old identity in sin. Convic conviction brings specific awareness of a sin. Condemnation brings vague uncertainty about sin. Conviction looks to Jesus. Condemnation looks to self. And conviction is a blessing. Condemnation is a burden. He starts by saying this, grace and peace to you from God our Father. I want you to see the difference between conviction and condemnation is really the difference between the character of God the Father and the character of Satan, his enemy and our adversary. Satan wants your identity to be in your sin. He wants you to never be able to leave it or escape it. He wants you to have no hope for your future. He wants to shame you. He wants to remind you. He wants to condemn you. He wants to destroy you. He wants the worst day of life to be the defining aspect of every day of life. Sometimes if you've not done anything wrong, he'll just want to give you general, vague, uncertain conviction. It's really condemnation masquerading as conviction. Some of you will feel that God is far and he's angry against you and he hates you and he's mad at you and he's just waiting to drop a hammer on your head and you're not sure what you've done. So you become obsessed and you start investigating your life. Where are my idols and where is my sin and what have I done wrong and what are my motives and I can't find anything big. Maybe it's something small and you obsess and you become worried and you become anxious and you become discouraged and God seems far and you seem hopeless. And for those of you with tender conscience, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You become like the Old Testament Jews who are trying to cleanse their house. They're looking under the rug and they're looking under the lamp and they're looking under the bed and they're dusting out the corners and they're trying to get it all clean. You're like that with your life. And it seems holy and it seems righteous because you'll talk about your sin and how awful you are and how evil you are and all the bad things you've done and you'll share your story and, and you'll, you'll, you'll talk about how terrible you feel and others will applaud you and how brave and authentic you are, but it's still all the attention to you, all of the focus to you. And everybody's looking at you. Nobody's looking at him. God is a father. He's a father who comes up to his kid who's in sin and says, okay, first let me specifically name the sin so you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just not gonna yell at you in general and make you figure it out. Let me put an arm around you. I love you. Right? You're my child. This, this is not acceptable. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna help you. And we're gonna stop this, okay? We're gonna do it together. This is the dad who smiles at you, gives you a kiss on the head and keeps his arm around you as he's helping walk you away from the sin and temptation. God's a father like that. When he points out sin, it's conviction. Like, really dad? Thanks, I appreciate the help. You love me? So that doesn't cause me to be kicked out of the family. Oh, and you're, you're not done with me, you love me and you're gonna help me and you're here for me and, and you see that who I am going to be is not who I've been and you're gonna help me get there? Wow, what a dad! What a dad, that's your father. Conviction is different than condemnation. Do you understand that? Conviction is different than condemnation. Jesus said he would send the Holy Spirit to convict God's people of sin. Paul says in Romans 8, 1, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Jesus tells us that believers will get conviction and Paul tells us that believers will not get condemnation. So number one, a saint is remorseful over sin. You can look back and say, boy, that was sin and 
I'm really grieved that 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 was what I said or did or failed to say or do. Paul does. He says he's the chief of sinners and a hypocrite and he's very clear elsewhere about his own sin. It may explain some of what he does, but it doesn't define who he is. 